Hi everyone, um, welcome to this edition of Sandy Speaks. Uh, this evening I'm going to be talking um, on Daydream and other stories uh, with my friend, special guest Bill Wadman. Hi Bill. Hello Sandy, how are you today? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. So uh, just so people watching know, we've, we've spoken quite a lot very recently about paintings, paintings that we enjoy looking at, things that we enjoy seeing. And I just want to refresh people's memory that I've, I've obviously interviewed you now a couple of times. Yep. Um, and I've been particularly interested when you've referenced paintings and, and made a connection between your photographs and the, the paintings of others. Do you, um, do you find that other people who you've interviewed who are photographers tend to reference other photographers rather than, than painters? No, I found that actually uh, most people I speak to have got a really wide range of inspiration in their life. Okay. Um, and maybe that speaks on its own, actually, that, that maybe I speak to people or choose to speak to people who do have a much wider frame of reference. Perhaps those people who would only reference other photographers wouldn't have sure. a range of the depth. I don't know. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, as you can see from the, the title slide, we're going to start with um, this painting and this is our this is our focus for the evening it's by the esteemed American artist Andrew Wyatt hmm. I like this one mm. I mean he made what 40 paintings of this woman and a couple hundred drawings something like that it's like it's a lot of work on one person yeah it's a vast archive yeah um, for people uh, not aware of, of Andrew Wyeth or indeed what we are speaking of now, the painting on this screen is called Daydream and it is a painting of a woman called Helga. Um, and as Bill says, Wyeth did make many studies of her over a, a long period of time, pretty much in secret. It was, it was kept secret from everybody, but I think what a lot of people find most fascinating is that it was kept secret from everybody, including his wife. Um, yeah. I'm sure we'll come back to that kind of um, point a little bit later, but um, just to make everybody aware, it's a, a painted in 1980. Um, when Wyeth was already, I guess, quite an old, an old man. Six, three years old. Um, so yeah. a mature painter, not somebody just starting out, somebody who probably knows what they, what they want, how they paint, has a kind of particular self-awareness in their painting. Um, Bill, what is it about this painting for you that draws you in? I, you know, this is the kind of painting, this is back to the original conversation we were having when we logged on here. Um, this is the kind of painting that I would see and think, oh, I'd love to make something photographic like that, you know, to have that sort of same essence of light and the composition and all the rest of it. Um, although I think this is definitely one of those examples of where if you actually did make this photograph this way and had a camera exactly where he was painting from, the tones of this painting would not be, the tones that he was looking at are not what he represented in the room. You know what I mean? There's like more fill of her on, there's more light hitting her front which, you know, could have been a white wall behind him, you know, that kind of thing. But I feel like the tone and the color, or even in the shadows is warmer than it would have been in the room, which I always find that kind of stuff fascinating when I try to uh, imagine doing this as a photograph. But there's something about this painting specifically, and I think this is true of a lot of Wyeth's work of Helga for me, where even before... I heard the stories about how all of this was being done in secret and he was hiding them with his friend and his wife didn't even know and all the rest of it, that there's this weird sort of secret intimacy going on between the two of them um, where it really does feel like you as the viewer are sort of putting yourself in wife's head, not as a third party viewer looking at the painting. It's always how I feel like I feel like I'm suddenly in the room when this is getting made and I'm the person making it versus looking at the canvas and thinking, oh, look, it's a, you know, beautiful woman lying nude on a bed. Um, it doesn't feel like a painting to me. It feels like I am in the room when I'm looking at it. And so it's 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 voyeuristic, but it's not. Um, 
like a third party thing. It feels like a really first party viewing to me. That's, that's how, what, how I always come. And that's true of a lot of wife's work, especially with her. Um, I feel, and I, I, you know, maybe it's clouded by the reality of, of the relationship that they had, but, um, I don't know. That's, that's where I always keep coming back to, you know, I think truthfully, I've become a bit, um, dissatisfied with the scandal surrounding the Helga paintings. Dissatisfied the, how? Well, because I, I mean, I use this painting virtually every year in teaching at A-level with students where we look at the nude and we look particularly at how we can engage with paintings in a way that means we don't have to know a lot about context to still get a firm grasp of how we feel about something. So, sure. I mean, for want of a better description, I call it art detective. Like if we're going to art detective around this painting and um, there are so many immediate responses we make based on our own experience um, there are also lots of clues in the painting that are very subtle that give us a kind of frame of reference with which we feel we then build a narrative for example but the the thing the word I use being dissatisfied you know I I'm very interested in what you say about voyeurism and very interested particularly in notions that Wyeth was himself a voyeur and that this relationship was um, consensual. Um, but I wonder, I wonder more broadly in, in art where we have a, a vast archive of female nudes studied over centuries by sure. male artists, whether much as there might be a, a sense of consent, whether the, the subject is actually complicit. Um, I don't you, know so you're I, saying that because she was, because they did this in a partnership, as it were, of some kind, mm -hmm. that that's different? Well, I wonder about it. I mean, I, I, do you, but do you agree that there, there's something about this painting or this set of paintings that there's a, and I don't mean this in a necessarily a sexual nature, but just that there's, there's a one-on-one -on -one intimacy between these two people that, that is palpable in the work that he did with her? I do, but I think uh, what's interesting for me is that as I've um, grown up looking at this painting, uh, my perception of it has changed. Um, and also through talking to students across now many years uh, and hearing what they have to say, um, always, always my students are, are stuck in an age of being 17 and 18. Yep. Yet every year, of course, the context in which those 17 and 18 year olds live changes. So an 18 year old last year might say something different about this painting than an 18 year old 15 years ago when I was sure. a relatively uh, new teacher, fresh teacher. Mm, but that I, speaks almost to the time as much as it does the students, right? Just, you know, the... Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think one of the most interesting things that actually a student brought to my attention was because of the inclusion of the, the mosquito net, we could read that very simply as a, a kind of a memento of the summer, something that evokes yet another sense or a layer of a sense of it being heady and hot, of it being balmy and dreamy, daydream. But um, a few years ago, one student pointed out that actually it gives a, a, another layer or barrier between the viewer and Helga. So as much as Wyeth paints Helga and shows us her body, he still doesn't give us free reign over her. That is only for him. Yeah, it's true. I, I would have said that it's, it's interesting because I look at this both as somebody who would be trying to create a composition of my own in, in this kind of thing. And I kind of put myself in the, into his head and I might think to myself, oh, without that mosquito net, without the diffusion, there's something, there's like a dimensionality missing to this painting, like it needs another layer. And so that he may have chosen to, to create that layer for purely compositional reasons. But I do agree with you that if it is in the sense that you're talking about, that it's less a barrier that you're not allowed in, and I see it more as a bear, well, to twist your, the way you're thinking about it a little bit, it's mo almost more a barrier to just one very thin veneer of protection over her like that that he that he feels responsible somehow 
um, for her portrayal in 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 the in the painting. Um, yeah, th th yeah, that it is that it is almost like yeah, it's it's hit like she's mine, not yours. Yeah, it's 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 a really interesting. Sorry, I just I lost my train of thought there. But yeah, it's it is a uh, it is an addition that you you wouldn't have found in a more classical painting, which you know we'll talk about a little bit later. It's like a sort of a, a twist on the classics. This one feels very twentieth century to me, in mm -hmm. a way that that other stuff doesn't. You know what's really weird to me because uh, I was born in nineteen seventy five, so when I look at this and I think, oh, it was made in nineteen eighty. He died in two thousand nine. When I first saw Wyeth paintings at MoMA and other places, I guess I just never really looked at his, 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 uh, you know, years of his life, because I was looking at, you know, uh, Christina's world and stuff, in the aughts when Wyeth was still alive. You know what I mean? Like I could have met the man in some crazy thing, mm -hmm. and to think that I was five years old when this painting was made, and I lived probably two hours away from where it was made. Um, it's got this this like this whole other layer of of oh this is in my time stream you know what I mean like this is in my lifetime's um, flow of time, which also makes me look at it differently than if it was painted in the fifties. Um, although I mean a lot of the almost all the pictures that he made of her, because there's no there's no technology there's no nothing it's it's very stripped down they are sort of timeless within a four decade period. You know, this could be anywhere from the 30s to the 90s, theoretically, you know. Um, but I wonder um, even if the, the depiction of the female nude in this way, the way it's painted, the attention to things like um, the feet yeah. and the hands, you know, in classical painting, feet and hands, of course, they're represented um, accurately in terms of anatomy. But there's not still the sense of, um, in Wyeth's painting, there is a sense that this is a a real foot yep. that has dirt and callus and um it, and there's nothing grotesque about it it's a bit just no, no, no. real it's realism isn't it well I, even even the way those two feet lie on top of each other is i mean it's it's look it's probably very precisely posed all of this but it feels mm. very natural you know even the way that she's clasping one arm with the other you know, one hand with the, with, 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 uh, on the arm there. Um, and you can almost imagine that left arm falling asleep underneath her, you know, getting crunched under her shoulder and her hand up there. Um, there's something I get, again, there's, you know, there's, there's this thing that, that happened, I think in some painting in, in the late 19th century, and then definitely in the 20th century, especially with very sort of, you know, straight representation, like th this kind of thing, where it almost feels like they're, a lot of paintings like this feel like they're based off photographs. You could have taken this photograph and it would have felt very similar, at least in the way that she's posed. You know what I mean? Like that feels very realistic. But there's also something about this painting where it definitely has these, this three dimensional thing going on. You know, the window back there and the space between her and the window feels like more space than it does between the, you and her, you know, or, or Wyeth in this case and her mm -hmm. feels, feels close. She feels closer to him than she does to the windows back there. So there's like this nice depth that, that, although does it bother you that the, it, I always feel like the top and bottom of the bed frame don't feel like the perspective is quite right on them. No, it's not. But I think also he was working with very, um, a very difficult room. I mean, they often painted in the attic uh, the attic space and so the eve I would kill for an attic space by the way mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to go back to this idea of distance and kind of proximity sure. between the artist or the viewer and the, the 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 model and then the model and the window and actually even calling her a model seems wrong for Helga Helga is Helga she is fair enough yeah stands alone but uh, the way that Wyeth's painted the net for me it's always felt like there is no back of the net and therefore she carries on out of the window, uh, window and into all space. Now you're saying something about the timeless nature of the painting. Could be any time. We have very it's little really purchase. About the, what, okay, I agree with you that it looks like there's no back of the net. But me in my mind, I think, I think that the, it's, 
I do this all the time, so forgive me if, if I, but it's, it, it, it feels like had he painted the back of the net, it would have just cluttered the composition or been hard to see the windows, and so he chose not to. And that you and others and myself in, in some ways would read into that to have meaning, even though it was a more of a technical requirement than, 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 a, than a conscious decision. What do you think of that? I would often agree with things like that, that painters are concerned, of course, with technical elements within their painting. But I also know that Wyeth, much as he was a, a very, very skilled technical painter and draftsman, um, that everything is laden and dripping with a sense of his um, codifications of uh, meaning, his codification of love and of uh, the erotic or of senses of freedom and making an inquiry into what he needs, what he needs. I get the impression about Wyeth, and of course I, I've never met him, I don't didn't know him. I can't ask him. I can't get to know him. But I get the impression that he um, was very determined, but that he had been in incredibly impacted by having a pretty isolationist existence as a child. And everything is, is center focused. So as much as we're looking out at Helga through his eyes, we're also looking right back into Wyeth. And that tells me that even the, the most technical seeming of elements within the composition are actually much more about who he thinks he is. And that there, there will be something in this painting to do with the distance between the window and the bed that, yes, is to do with the simple distance between the window and the bed, but will also be representative of something going on in Wyeth, in his psyche, in his, in his inner being. And um, I do love the idea that when Betsy, his wife, did see these paintings at first, and someone said, well, what do you, what do you see? Probably expecting some kind of rise or a scandal to erupt further to the scandal that was already erupting because of these paintings. But she actually said all she could, she said, all I see is love. Yeah. So that's his, his wife speaking about seeing these paintings. And I think also something about this that brings me even closer than I was before to these paintings is that um, there's so much speculation about whether Wyeth and, and Helga had a sexual relationship. Sure. And I think, I mean, you shared with me a few weeks ago a, a documentary in which Helga speaks about her relationship with Wyeth. It was, she spoke very eloquently about him. It almost did, felt overly but, prepared, but I, it could be that she's just thought about it a lot, you know? Of course, but also I think, you know, there's a real currency to, to prolonging that mystery and that sense of kind of scandal, really. You know, it gives cu further currency to paintings that already stand alone in the archive of 20th century American art. However, there is also the sense that they didn't have a sexual relationship. Now that's incredible to a lot of modern viewing audience. You know, we don't, we don't want to think that they didn't have an affair. There's almost like a salaciousness that we enjoy um, in a painting like this when we know its story. However, I think what's really beautiful about this is the notion that there wasn't a sexual relationship, but that there just was this incredible love that was, you know, for want of a better description about being soulmates, about, about people who were able to commune with each other beyond their body spaces. Mm. It's interesting because I, when I watched that, I heard, I heard two things. I heard the way that she spoke about him was almost in a worshipful sense. It, it sounded like she sort of, she as a bit younger than him, worshiped him and loved the attention and I think that I get the sense from the work that he made of her that he was very much in love or at least enamored with her. Hmm. And maybe it's sort of the tension of those two things yeah. that leads to this. So there didn't need to be the sex. In some ways, they were more intimate than if they actually had consummated. Yeah. 
you know. But I think, you know, we're taught not to um, think of that or find that culturally. Sure. Um, I, f- I find that really weird. Actually, I have, a, I, have a, I have a bunch of dancer friends, but I have one dancer friend that I've photographed a lot and I've, you know, made, made um, uh, motion works of and I've, I've, I've photographed nude before and that kind of stuff. And, and I was talking to her a while back and I said, you know, it's, it's really interesting to me that you are married and you know you have a relationship with your husband you have relationships with all of the dancers that you dance with male and female but let's just for the second sake of for the argument with the male dancers that you have to have a sort of relationship while dancing with them and Mm -hmm. people you've danced with for 10 years you have an intimacy with um and as you said you have an intimacy with me you know you and i have an intimacy because of all the work we've done together and i i to your to your point though about how culturally we're not sort of taught to think about that stuff mm. or think about that as an acceptable relationship to have outside of say a marriage or whatever it is, the ability to have love or, or that connection with multiple people in life. I don't know. Sounds pretty great to me personally, like just the idea of, I mean, even the non-sexual thing, just the idea that it's like having intimacy with people. I mean, to your point of the currency to me, the currency of life is those in those relationships with other people that are at that level. You know, I think that's really wonderful. Sorry to cut you off. You were saying something. No, I think that's a complete, a complete point in itself. I, I wouldn't need to add to that. It is. Uh, but I mean, do you agree though, that this does feel like you are in his brain while looking at it, or do you not like that interpretation? I'm I'm with Wyeth. Yeah. But I'm not Wyeth. Okay, interesting. And I think also, you know, it's interesting when I again speaking to students about this, does anybody ever put themselves in Helga's place? And I don't know. As an exercise, as an exercise in all painting actually, figurative painting. We so readily put ourselves in the position of the artist because we we see from the artist's vantage. Uh, but do we put ourselves in the position ever of the of the model? It is interesting. That you, I mean, you're right, especially in painting, uh, you tend to assume that it is the painter who's speaking, for lack of a better word. You know what I mean? That 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 they're telling the story of whatever is in frame or on the canvas. That even if <laughs> even if the people are doing something inside the painting, that it's all based on the interpretation of the artist putting the paint down. But yeah, and of course, of course, that's that is true. That is true. That's yeah, reasonable, right. right? But the other thing is, is that we also, by doing that, we only usually um, buy into or indeed endorse kind of heteronormative and um, sure. cultural paradigm. We we are not pushing beyond that, and we're also not saying that um, the sitter has a voice. And in, in that way, we we transform her, even when she's not into a vessel, it makes a misogynist out of Wyeth in many ways. And I don't, I don't need him to be that. Does it necessarily do that? Or is it, I mean, if, if he had just been making a bunch of paintings of another man, would that somehow, would that be different? Well, that's the impossible question though, Bill, isn't it? I mean, but lots of people have made series of images of people of both sexes, you know? I would, I would challenge you now to go find a big series of uh, paintings find, of a man. To find a series of paintings uh, yeah. of, of a man who over many years has been recorded by another man or by a woman in various states of nudity and that level of vulnerability, physical vulnerability. And also while sleeping, I mean, while sleeping is such a powerful thing. We can look at, you know, um, painters like Courbet, in the 19th century, we're painting sleepers frequently. We can look yeah. more recently and we can think about Tilda Swinton's stint at MoMA in the glass box called The Maybe, um, supported, of course, initially by, um, you know, kind of like a, a vast uh, context of, of sleeping in art and what that means to be so exposed through sleep. But really, I think this is a, this is a particularly usual 
frame of reference for male painters with female models? Well, I think it, A, I think it has to do with the fact that many of the painters are, you know, uh, cis male who are interested in women and want to paint them naked. But I think that there's also the going all the way back to antiquity, right? Like just, you know, the mythology of women. And at least that's hundreds of years of that was based upon a lot of that. But you're right. I mean, but how much of that has to do with the misogyny of there just being less remembered female painters over those centuries and well, you know, quite, less, um, I think if you if you talk about um sort of going back into antiquity then we could say that for example in ancient Greek art we see a parity between representations of female and male forms yeah but that classical encounter between an artist and a and a and a model was actually in so many ways um I don't want to say depersonified but it was much less about the, the characterfulness of the person and more about the physical, the beauty standard of the, of the vehicle. Sure. But, and you're also talking about a time when, you know, uh, uh, like have, having young male models in, in your, in your studio was much more forgiven than it was say 400 years ago when Christianity was dominating the West. You know what I mean? There's also that element of, of uh, uh yeah it's it's it is it is interesting it's like i want it's like how how far out of the onion do you have to go before you find the 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 original sin as it were of of why things are the way they are and a lot of this stuff uh, do you imagine that she's actually sleeping hmm. Because I, I see her as, as eyes lying there, but I don't see her as actually sleeping. Well, again, I mean, I'm going to just, I'm going to ruthlessly pluck from my student conversations. Um, I've had all kinds of interpretations chucked at me about this. Um, some of them are incredibly startling. You know, there are lots of things, I, I mentioned the word before about consent. Um, you know, ideas that perhaps she's um, she's not asleep, but she's somehow frightened, or um, that the raised hand is not simply a sleeping pose, but actually a, a defensive position. I've had all kinds of things. You know, the foot to me dis disallows that. The foot, the, the drape of the foot, the cross of the foot, on the other, shows somebody who's relaxed rather than in a fearful recoil. But nonetheless, you know, if we were to take bit by bit, we could say that is she asleep? Is she, again, this word com complicit or is there a compliance? Is there a consent? You know, has Wyeth happened upon a sleeping Helga and painted her without her knowledge? I think that that chance is slim to none. Indeed, but it's still okay to look at that. Sure. To feel out how we really feel about those um, notions of, of somebody looking at another person. I mean, you started off early in the conversation talking about voyeurism. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, for many people, an incredibly voyeuristic painting because she's so passive. She's so passive. What control does she possibly have? Now, I would say well, that... She could have control in her passivity. She could have chosen to step back and say... I'm going to lie here and allow you to paint me. There's power in that, isn't there? There's also power in a, in a person understanding that their physical vehicle is in fact beauty. Sure. Um, so all of that counts. Mm -hmm. But um, I think coming back to what you were asking about, you know, do I feel like I'm in Wyeth's brain? I become Wyeth in the moment of engaging with what I see. But I feel torn away from that, actually, because of that mosquito net, because he hasn't given me full access. Interesting. I mean, that, it's. I I wonder. It's and yeah, we can we can go over the manet too. It's. I wonder how much of that has to do with just you know differences of how you and I see the world between. A man and a woman between you know I, I i do less analysis of art i think in general than than you probably do um but i'm making stuff all the time so maybe i'm just always 
I'm stuck on that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I how, don't how, think either of us are stuck. I well, think not stuck. I just, I, I, sometimes I wonder how much I, 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 I default to being the person making the art and thinking the way they do and therefore putting myself in their shoes, you know? I do think it was very interesting when I first interviewed you about your own work. Um, I was astonished that I didn't get um, when actually speaking to you, I didn't get what I expected from your dances in motion. What did you expect? I think I expected I think I expected to hear you riff on the poetics of it. Oh, I, interesting. I see. It's interesting to me that like that particular series of mine is probably the least poetic thing I've ever done. Yeah, I find it it's, it's so interesting, isn't it? And likewise, you know, if we had if we had Wyatt here right now, and he yeah. was able to speak for himself, you, you, you know, might say you both have it so wrong. It was X instead yeah, of Y. Or Z. So, isn't this the luxury of us? What an enormous privilege we have. Yeah, I think you know. I mean, I think in 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 the case of my motion series say there was very little intimacy with me and the models because it really just felt like a numbers game that I was playing. Yeah. It's part of the reason why I haven't made a billion of those. It's just like they, I did it They're I think they're beautiful, but it's ultimately unsatisfying to me from a personal and artistic place. Well, I, wonder what, like, I wonder what Wyeth would feel in terms of his satisfaction then. I, I think he was very satisfied because I think he was, desperately in love with this woman and i think i think that there was i think that there was satisfaction there's also this idea of if you have someone like that who is willing to model for you all the time because he had a number of people that he knew model for him over the years right neighbors and all kinds of people from what i've read that that knowing that someone was always willing to be amused in that way must have been very it's it's not it's not a safe thing but it is a a matter of oh i know that they're always there if i ever want to create they're willing to work with me and mm -hmm. there's something there's something very safe in that idea you know what i'm saying yeah um i mean i was speaking to um philip toner yeah. the other day and we were asking each other, you know, is it better to be an artist or the muse? And I really do think if you can be both simultaneously, that is absolutely the best way to be. And I, with Helga, I'm going to go back to it because we're still talking about it. Sorry. Um, I, I, I do, I do love the idea because I identify with the, with the desire of it, that there is such artistry in her, not about well, I mean her. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I mean, A, there's just the simple aesthetic fact that she's a beautiful woman, right? I mean, that's A, is, is, mm -hmm. is, is an element of it. But B, there is a level of, what's the word I'm looking for? Vulnerability, I think, to a lot of the paintings. It, it doesn't feel like she's putting on airs in any of the images I've ever seen of her, you know? Um, it, it really does feel like she's stripped down in this case, clothing wise, but I think defensively, even in the images where she is clothed, I think that there's something very direct about her as a muse for him. And I think that, I mean, I think that's why maybe you could, that's why I connect with them. Mm. It, does, it does feel like there's, there's not a lot of artifice involved. Do you think uh, this is, you've already answered this, but you said that you believe why desperately in love with Helga. Yeah. Mm. Is that a thing for photographers, for any artist looking? Falling in love with muses? Uh-huh. Oh God, yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that in some ways that is, I think that that is an ingredient to making a certain kind of work, you know? And that, and that may be, that may be from a, from a very sort of, you know, lizard brain, I find that person attractive point of view, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there is that, of course. There's like a lust factor, of course. 
but that but 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 beyond that there are people that you meet who you photograph who just there's just something about them that keep you wanting to come back for more and it's not a sexual thing at all it's just like there's this element of it that 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 makes you feel like there's promise there like it's it's like it's like a load of 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 silver to mine you know what i mean like there's good stuff in there if i can all if i could just keep chipping away at it somehow and not chipping away at them but using them to chip away at some sort of block of marble that you have in your own mind mm -hmm. um and i like in having the like that's why i went back to the sort of availability of her i think that there's a lot of power in that um both her power and like just the ability for that to spark something in the imagination of somebody making something. I think that there's a lot of value in that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's totally an element of what I do. But then again, I, I mean, except for the rare occasion where I have not liked one of the people I photographed, which I could probably count on my two hands if I had to, um, in a small way, I've fallen for most of the people I photographed. Yeah. you know but that's i'm a portrait photographer that's what i do um yeah sorry we can go to the money I, I, we c well the reason why we've got the money here is is also purely selfishly from my point of view i do pair these images frequently in school as a means of drawing out a lot of the conversation we've actually already had the relationship between the artist and the muse um sure. the way that female nudes are presented or represented um, in Western art. Um, but actually, I do wonder with Manet how much of a rogue he was. He was certainly a, he was certainly a, a pioneer. Yeah. Um, and the way he's painted Olympia, uh, I wonder if there is any parity between Olympia and Helga. Uh, you know, in staring at these pictures and doing a little reading and doing a little of my own armchair analysis, I see these as very different paintings. I, I, I mean, and part of that just goes to show you how much changes over the course of 120 years or whatever the hell it is difference, right? Um, I, you know, wait, I, I just like to point out like how almost perfect the golden section is of the, the background. <laughs> with the split down there it's like are you kidding me with this like really just measure it out i actually pulled this image into photoshop and uh did some numbers uh actually calculated to see how close that golden strip down was to where it's supposed to be uh from from a fibonacci point of view and it's actually a little bit to the right of where it's supposed to be. But actually on the left-hand side, if you notice, it goes the red curtain over to like a little black curtain. That number, that uh, ratio is actually almost perfectly on the golden section. Um, this is, it's okay, so this is interesting because she is looking straight out at the viewer, right? She's looking out at you. And yet in some way, I do not feel like the painter in this one, even though she's theoretically directly looking at the painter. This one does not feel like nearly as much of a direct connection to me. It doesn't feel nearly as intimate. I mean, again, 117 years, different time. He was recreating classical stuff, pushing it a little further. It's a different, it's a totally different goal in some ways. He was recreating um, classical work. However, much as he looked at classical art and much as he was inspired by people like Velazquez and I mean Courbet was a contemporary really of his sure. um Goya as well sure I think for Manet it's a, it's a big influence we're seeing somebody who is allowing us to look and linger in looking at a female who otherwise is in the shadows of society she might be vitally important culturally as a courtesan. But to see a prostitute so brazenly looking back out at us, I wonder if that jadedness in her is quite intentional for money. I mean, it very well might be, but but it's funny between the flower in her hair and the and the you know the 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 necklace and the and the the bracelet and the shoes even um 
there is an element of it. It's as 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 determined and self confident as she seems to be staring out at you. It also feels like she's cover well, she's literally covering herself up, but that there is it's far less um free than the later painting, of course. I mean, look, there's, I feel like this one with the cat, with the servant, with the flowers, with the accoutrement I was just talking about, this is much more sort of classical symbology, right, going on in this one than, than, in, than in the, uh, than the Wyeth. Um, just, a, it's a complete, it's, to me, it's a completely different thing. When you talk to about this in your class, do you, do you, Imagine it as as a close analog or or as the other side of a coin. Well, I think it's unavoidable that um, we say that Wyeth is also meshed in with classical conventions. Sure. Painting. Um, I think there are so many commonalities, but that perhaps this is it's a fascinating um, comparison because we want to say they're alike because they're both female nudes. And then I think what, we're, what we then encounter is something comes up in us that says, actually, no, they're not alike because Helga's painting or Wyatt's painting of Helga is about intimacy and closeness and love. Whereas this painting is about um, something, a kind of pioneering spirit. It's also about sex. It's about something that is much more overt, probably, um, less palatable in one way but really is it and then we go to the next layer along of, of peeling away and thinking well actually maybe there are similarities Mane knows this woman he painted her more than once um, he's like Wyeth or rather Wyeth like Mane gives us access but at the same time denies us access because of the devices they use with which to separate us. And I, I wonder why they do that. I mean, this is a very large painting and it's why I put the sizes of the paintings on the, on the screen. This is a confrontational painting. It's confrontational in so many ways. And yet still, that jadedness is very much reminiscent of what would come to pass uh, in the 20th century if we go to Amsterdam to the red light district and we see women in windows. Sure. This is a woman in a window, really. We are yeah. shopping. It's funny, you, I, you're just saying that, and the word that comes to mind for me while you were talking about all that was transactional. Yeah. I mean, even with the servant bringing the flowers that obviously somebody brought to her, the way she's looking at you saying, you want some of this? That's fine, but it's gonna cost you. Like there's sort of, there's like that kind of element. And even if you don't even think of it as like a direct, even if you don't even imagine her as a direct, prostitute there is even uh, even this idea of just like i'm going to use what i have to to trade with you for something some of what you have it doesn't feel like it's like there is there is it's but sort what of, is, the transaction of in this painting? is there a transaction in this painting well of course there's a transaction in anything but i don't feel like it's it is it's different it's it's like the 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 um the intention is completely different is it you know i think so yeah okay. um i think i think wyeth and helga now it could be it could be that mané and i forget what the woman's name is because she's she's a painter herself right the uh, the model and the mané um you know, he may have painted her a bunch of times. Does that, but that doesn't mean that they have any sort of relationship, you know, in 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 in, in like a personal relationship necessarily. Are, are we are we becoming ourselves very identified with this though? Could well, be. I mean, but, yeah. you know, there's there's a kind of um, a difficulty always with figurative painting. I find myself is that I I immediately find myself identifying in some way with the painting. Well, wait, hold on a second. Is, is that necessarily wrong or not what the artist intended? No, I mean, there's no value judgment in it other than to just say that it does direct how I then move forward into the painting. Mm, okay. Um, I mean, that's obvious, isn't it? Sure. I think when we look at Olympia, we're looking at, again, uh, 
consenting adult being painted for purposes of, should we say male pleasure or for another purpose? Why she's being painted in the first place? Okay, but you know, what is her purpose in this painting? For, from Manny's point of view or from her point of view? I mean, if she's a professional model, then she might be getting paid to sit there and look that way, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it might, it, might, it might not be about any of those things for her. It may if be it, that Manny is trying to... to if it's possible to, that we take out what we know. You, you terrified me earlier when you said, I'm reading all about Manny. I'm finding out everything I can. I'm studying. I'm not I, I just want to do a little research, but okay. But I, th I thought, hang on, you know, I, I sometimes wish that I hadn't studied, so I didn't know. And I don't mean I know everything about this. Sure. Far from it. But in supposedly knowing, we'll come back to this wonderful thing, it was actually the writer, Alif Shafak, said it, um, where, you know, we're not teaching nuanced ways of thinking because when we deal in information, we're not actually working with knowledge. And beyond that still, we don't get to wisdom very easily from information. And actually when we find out the backstories of things, we're actually furnishing with information. And by forgetting the information and simply encountering, and in some way, I suppose, communing with what we see, um, wherever we can, even just as an exercise to relieve, of, relieve us of the, the heaviness of information, you know, take away that we know that Olympia is a prostitute. Take away um, the symbols that we understand, the, 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 the tie around the neck. Take away the gold bracelet and the flower and the hair. Take away the cat. Take away the mosquito net, take away the pigtails, take away what we know of those things, only see them. And then when we engage with painting at that level, what do we really see? Well, if we, if we engage with paintings at that level, I mean, if we're, if we're just responding purely on a basic, and I say basis in like sort of a um, deep mind, almost unconscious level, we are going to put what we have in our own minds on onto onto what we're seeing, right? I mean, we're, you may almost identify with these people even more, maybe without sort of any external uh, stuff to go on. I mean, is that, I think is that, that a more authentic? Uh, is that a more authentic way of seeing the painting? Well, arguably, but I mean, I think in some ways it's a little. It's almost more navel gazy because you're not getting outside yourself. You're 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 working with purely what you have in your own head and your own experience of say the work of art versus I think that sometimes when you do some research or know a little bit more about a piece, um, having that context brings in a whole other element, like, you know, from a, from, from a, a third dimension of stuff. Um, I mean, I, look, look, I mean, even, even from a technique point of view between these two paintings, I think part of the reason why we identify with, with Helga in the Wyeth and not for me as much the model in the Mene is is also because of the way there's a there's a two dimensionality to the Mene that I don't feel like it it doesn't feel as real to me it feels like a more, far more of a representation of a woman it feels very flat you know mm -hmm. it feels like the whole image just got and just got like squished together to me. Um, and then you look at stuff, you look at contemporary work of a similar style, or not a similar style, but a similar subject matter. And, you know, it's much more sort of neo-baroque and all that kind of, you know, very flowery dimensionally stuff. Part of what made this painting and many stuff the way it is, is the style that he puts into it. But I find personally that I don't always, I don't always identify with it as well. And I think, I mean, as you and I talked about during the conversations we've had before, I mean, the people who are my favorite painters, a lot of times their paintings feel very photographic, not necessarily photorealistic, but just the way that the depth feels and the light feels and all the rest of it. Um, 
Manet's paintings don't do that for me and why it's due. So I, like just on a base level, not knowing anything about them at all, I would still lean towards preferring for whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Wyeth's interpretation of a nude woman over Manet's. I wonder why it's very, it's an automatic thing to do, of course, but we do rush into position with these, don't we? Sure. Um, but I mean, isn't there, there, isn't there a blink judgment to any of this kind of stuff? Yeah, and I think you know, as soon as we put any two paintings next to each other, we move immediately into the realm of comparison. Sure, of course. But the purpose of comparing paintings like this, you know, obviously we want to spark conversation. For me as a teacher, I want to be able to um, support a sense that students journey through a painting um, so they don't simply take it at face value. Um, because I think there is a, a, an importance to knowing what I feel, what one feels about a painting, not, one, not what just one sees. Um, to understand the deep engagement one can have with painting or with any visual art, why that is, how that forms our, our entire matrix of understanding when we see anything in front of us. But do you think that that is just sort of, that is just trying to find a deeper understanding of, of your own mind in some ways, like looking at it that way? Mm -hmm. it, it, to, to me, sometimes it, it my, I try in my analysis of art often to get away from exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If only because, you know, I am sometimes, and I don't read a lot of art analysis, but, but if I'm going to, I want to get a perspective I wouldn't, a conclusion or a perspective I wouldn't come to on my own in order to sort of deepen the toolbox of how I see things, you know. Um, I mean, I get, it goes, it goes both ways. I, part of it is that I generally don't think too much. Of, uh, I don't analyze these things on a very deep verbal level. I usually look at them and I feel a certain way, but I don't find the need to put that into words. And oftentimes when I do, I feel like it's a poor representation of how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. Um, and so sometimes if, if by reading people's uh, other people's analysis, it's interesting because I, I read a few things about this painting last night, some of which I just thought this is utter BS. Like this is just terrible analysis of this, or, you know, this is putting a late 20th century analysis onto something that was made 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Um, so it's not that I automatically buy other people's interpretations, but I do, I don't think, I guess I, that is as much of a fallacy as you sound like you think that it, or, 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 a, or a, a cul-de-sac, you know, getting stuck in, in, in that. No, I think one of the most significant things we can do to enrich learning is to listen deeply, attentively to what others say. Sure. Um, I also don't think there's any necessary value judgment. So to say a painting is good or bad, we don't need to do that. It just is. It just is. And in that being, we enter something that we can simply explore. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because even at the beginning, I don't know if it was before we hit record or not. We were talking, oh, we were talking about the, 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 the idea of the, the image that I would choose if I shot somebody for, if I had a hundred photographs of someone, the one that I would choose as the most representational of them. I have to make those, this is good, this is bad decisions constantly. You know, I have to take these hundred, get them down to 25, take those 25, get them down to 10. And so I am in some ways making decisions of my own work of which I think is the best. Of course, could, there's, a particular, um, there's a particular context then for you, which is to do with your commercial life. 
Yeah, and sometimes my purely artistic life, though, you know, this, like what I think is the most aesthetically pleasing or that I think speaks in the voice that I want to be heard in, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's far less, most of the time it is far less top level analytical. And most of the time it is just like, no, that one feels right to me. That's, that's, that's the answer. That's the right one. Um, Do you think a painter goes through the same process when they're applying the paint to the surface of the canvas? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I do. Um, doesn't mean all of them are successful every time though. Mm. It's, uh, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, you and I could go on for this for 26 hours, I think, which I'm happy to do. <laughs> well, Bill, as usual, it's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. We'll have to, we'll have to, uh, pick a bunch more to, uh, to, compare and contrast <laughs> so for now with many thanks to our esteemed artists of the evening Mane and of course Andrew Wyeth but for me uh, many thanks to, to Bill thank you Sandy um, that was fun hope to speak to you again <laughs>